A lot of people praise the diesel engine and it, you know they the feeling is is that they run forever and that they're the way to go but in many cases they're not because if anything ever goes wrong with them it's high dollar it's uh, you know I had a, a Ford pickup with um, the 6.9 uh, diesel engine and a cylinder cracked on it and the estimated cost to replace that engine was eight grand and the truck was worth maybe 2500 so to the scrapyard it went and uh, and I'm not an unusual case people buy diesel uh, vehicles and if the diesel goes bad the cost to repair exceeds the value of the vehicle and so then you just have to decide do I just want to get a different vehicle so with a gas engine yeah, if it goes bad, it might cost you a couple of grand. But uh, with the diesel, that's just uh, entry money. It goes up from there. Let's go take a look at the engine in this bus. This is what Savannah thinks about the whole thing. Yeah. Diesels get uh, great fuel economy, and they have a lot of torque for towing. But uh, the cost of repairs is such that... Uh, you can buy a lot of gasoline for eight thousand dollars. Right. You know. So what do you think about this one? I think it looks clean. It doesn't look like it's. It hasn't been steam cleaned or anything, and I don't see any oil leaks. It looks pretty, pretty good. Just on uh, principle, what do you think about the Vortec 6.0 uh, eight-cylinder engine that Chevy puts out? Oh, they're great. I mean, that's a, it's a preferred engine. It really is. Uh, it beats the, the heck out of the Ford products. Is this the biggest engine that Chevy makes in a gasoline? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're still using the 454 block in special cases or not. But I think in regular production vehicles, I think six is uh, uh, six liters is the, the highest they make, which is, uh, uh, I think it comes out to something like 377 cubic inches, something like that. Okay. Well, I know that when I was coming up with this uh, from Wyoming, we were pulling hills and I could leave it on cruise control and it would pull the hill in cruise control. So, yeah, I don't know if you can get a view of this, but the the oil's been run for a while and it's not bad at all. So, it's it's a it's a clean engine. Yeah. That's at least, if they change the oil work and they got it from the auction, well, that's at least from the yeah. uh, buy, this buy site, the purchase site, to here, which is about 800 miles, 850 miles. Yeah, if the engine was dirty, your oil would have been nasty by now. Okay. Let's go see what Larry's doing. And I got a few things that I wanted to cover. Everything's going good. We got, here we have the seats. Larry is in full swing taking the seats out. Wow. Whether he's working or whether it's the night after drinking, Larry's always on the ground the next day. There he is. I give him a hard time, but he does all the heavy lifting. I just uh, take all the credit. He always gives me a hard time. This is what's going on. We have started to remove the seats. We're, we're going to leave the chains on 
so much feedback about leaving the chains on. What I'm afraid of with those chains is I know the kind of roads that are out here and there's big rocks that protrude out of the surface of the ground eight ten inches and if one of those rocks hits the chain apparatus it's got nothing to do but bend back the u-bolts that are holding the leaf springs onto the rear axle and that's my big concern i looked at it we'll put a pause on it for now maybe we'll roll with them on uh most likely we will we're going to put a pause on that for now but otherwise we're taking the seats out it won't be long and we're going to be putting the floor in so we've got the floor in it and we'll be getting into the design danny b's here as you can see larry's here working hard a couple of things i wanted to ask you guys a favor the people that have uh, purchased things on amazon amazon doesn't tell me who you are and there's little notes in the boxes and i got some of the notes but one day when we were opening them opening the boxes the wind came and scattered everything so it it scattered everything and so some things i know who got it and some i don't uh if you could please send me an email to enigmatic nomadics at gmail.com and let me know who you are and what you purchased on the wish list well, as we're installing it i want to acknowledge you I, I thank you for doing that and i'd like to thank you as we're installing the stuff so if you could just do that favor for me and then also there's a couple of things that are showing the batteries two batteries and an inverter that we're that's going to be her main inverter are showing as purchased but they're reserved whoever reserved those if you want to go ahead and get those please do so now because now is the time we're about to get this thing in full swing uh if not you know that's fine too we just need to know we've got our cash reserves to build the van out with or the bus out with we've got to figure out how we're gonna manage this and prioritize and make sure we get the, the big stuff done. So please let us know, either go ahead and pull the trigger on those items or let us know that you're not going to unreserve them, whatever, and we'll work from there. Now, I wanna send a special thank you to our all of our GoFundMe contributors. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate that. Uh, Simon for the sending the solar panels. We haven't received them, but he just put them in the mail a couple of days ago. That's going to save us a lot of money. Uh, we've got the solar controller somebody bought. Please let me know who you are through that email. That's a really nice solar controller, so I'm real excited about that. We've got Robin Barnes, 45 Court Winter. Thank you so much for picking up that refrigerator. It's going to allow her to keep perishables on the road, and so that's going to really make a difference in her quality of life. I'll go ahead and put the address in the notes for where to send things. It's also on the wish list, but if anybody else wants to send anything, that address, I'll say it and then I'll put it in the notes. It's 2279 North University Parkway, number 158. It's Jamie Diamond is the name on the mailbox. Provo, Utah, 84604 1590. I'll put that again in the notes. Thank you so much for everyone that's contributed everything that you have. This is coming together beautifully. We couldn't even have imagined that it would go so well. Camera's going to have a solid home here very soon. We've got all the building blocks and foundation for what's going to make for a solid home for years to come. If we can just get Larry to get off the ground and start working, I think we'll make some real headway. We'll see you guys on the next upload. See ya.